We'll go ahead and call uh, today's traffic committee meeting. Uh, today is Tuesday, June 11, 2024, and it's 3.15 p.m. right now. We'll go ahead and start with our call to order, and I'm Brian Cervantes with the Engineering Division. I'm Lillian Fraser with the Engineering Division. Jana Robbins with Traffic. Corporal Adam Seigner, West Community Traffic. Officer Solomon, West Community Traffic. Joanne Burns, Deputy Community Development Director. Then we can go ahead and jump into our second item, which is the traffic committee items taken to the previous traffic committee meeting. Uh, the three items that were brought last month was the traffic review of Bentley Court and Hillside Drive, the traffic signage review of Lark Ellen Avenue and East Cameron Avenue, and the traffic review of Sunset Avenue and Roland Avenue. Uh, we can go ahead and hop into our third item, which is going to be the new traffic committee items. The first of which is the traffic review of 1227 South Orange Avenue. And for this one, the resident is requesting a review of traffic conditions near Hearst Ranch, located on 1227 South Orange Avenue. The resident explained that when vehicles park along the west side of the street, the view of oncoming traffic is obstructed, making it difficult for drivers to exit the property. And let me go through, perfect. So the posted speed limit along this section of Orange Avenue is 35 miles per hour. It's classified by Caltrans as a major collector road and is 40 feet wide. Uh, there is one lane of traffic in each direction and parking is allowed on both sides of the street except where red curb is marked. There is existing red curb at this location. There's 22 feet and 16 feet of red curb uh, south of the property. Uh, we did do a three-year collision history and found that there were zero collisions reported to Switters between January 2021 through December of 2023. And as well, we did do a, a site visit and line of sight review on June 5th of 2024. And based on uh, engineering judgment, the City of West Covina traffic request guidelines and guidelines found in the CAM UTCD and CVC, it was concluded that the Hearst Ranch located at 1227 South Orange Avenue does qualify for the installation of additional red curb to ensure a proper line of sight. So it's recommended to install 10 feet of red curb on the north side of the Southern Hearst Ranch driveway and 10 feet of red curb on the northern and southern sides of the Her northern Hearst Ranch driveway as shown in the diagram. Any discussion? If not, do we move to take this one to council? Yes? Yes. I'll, I'll make a yes, I'll second. Do you want to vote or? Aye. 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 <laughs> so then we'll move on to our second item, which is the traffic review of Merced Avenue between Glen Allen Avenue and Hollenbeck Avenue. For this, uh, for this request, the resident is requesting an evaluation of existing conditions along the segment of Merced Avenue between Glen Allen Avenue and Hollenbeck Avenue. The resident reported that vehicles tend to speed along Merced Avenue, causing concerns as the segment is located next to Hollandcrest Middle School, where there's pedestrian activity and an uncontrolled mid-block crosswalk at Michelle Street and Merced Avenue. For the existing condi conditions, Merced is a 35 mile per hour posted uh, speed limit road. Uh, it's 40 foot wide with 20 foot lanes, uh, travel lanes in each direction for eastbound and westbound travel. There is a mid-block crosswalk at Michelle Street, which is a zebra yellow crosswalk. Uh, according to the Caltrans road classification map, Merced is a local road, and there is on-street parking allowed on both sides of the street, except where a red curb is marked. As well, uh, we did do ADT counts for this location, and they were, uh, as well as 85th percentile speed survey. Both were taken on May 29th of 2024. The ADT along Merced Avenue was found to be a total of 5,720 vehicles per day, with 2,709 vehicles in the eastbound direction and 3,011 in the westbound direction. The 85th percentile speed during the uh, speed survey was found to be 39 miles per hour, which is slightly above the 35 mile per hour speed limit. And as well, we did collision histories uh, reviewing uh, sweaters between uh, Jan January of 2021 through December of 2023. Uh, in 2023 and 2022, there was one collision and in tw or each year, and then in 2021, there was three collisions. And one of the collisions was a vehicle versus ped slash pedestrian, or 
pedestrian slash bicycle. And as well, field visit was conducted and site photos were taken on May 7th of 2024. So based on engineering judgment warrants found in the CAM UTCD and CVC, it was determined that the segment of Merced Avenue between Glen Allen Avenue and Hollenbeck Avenue would benefit from signage enhancements to improve visibility for both vehicles and pedestrians in the area. Uh, this segment qualifies for recommendations as shown in the next exhibits. Uh, let's see. Okay, so all the recommendations are now shown on the screen which includes uh, signage and striping upgrades. I'm not sure, do you, should I go through all of them, Jana, the individual ones, you think, for this item? Um, you can. Okay. At least on the uh, Michelle. Okay. So uh, for the first one is to remove non-compliant pedestrian crossing signs uh, and install double-sided flashing pedestrian crossing signage with rectangular rapid flashing beacons or RRFBs. Uh, and that will be at Michelle Street for the unprotected mid-block crosswalk. Additionally, it's recommended to install flashing pedestrian crossing signage ahead signs with rectangular rapid flashing beacons as well uh, for both approaches on the north side and south side of the street for eastbound and westbound traffic or travel. Uh, additionally, it's recommended to remove and replace school zone sign that is located along the south side of Merced Avenue near Glen Allen and replace it with a school zone speed limit sign Additionally, it's recommended to remove and replace the faded stop signs at the northwest corner of the intersection of Merced Avenue and Glen, Al Glen Allen Avenue, as well as install red reflective strip on the stop sign posts there as well. Uh, it's also recommended to refresh the existing slow school crossing pavement markings uh, located along Merced for both eastbound and westbound travel. And on the next exhibit, it's uh, recommended to remove and replace the faded pedestrian sign located along the east side of Hollenbeck Avenue, uh, approximately 100 feet south of Merced Avenue and replace it with a school zone sign. Uh, the next recommendation is to remove and replace the faded school zone sign that is located on the north side of Merced Avenue, approximately 120 feet west of Hollenbeck Avenue and replace it with a new school zone sign. Uh, the next recommendation is to remove and replace the existing transverse crosswalk pavement markings located at north and east leg of the intersection of Merced Avenue and Hollenbeck Avenue and to replace them with ladder style crosswalk pavement markings. Uh, the next is to remove and replace the faded or damaged stop signs for all four approaches at that same intersection of Merced Avenue and Hollenbeck Avenue and as well to remove and replace the faded four-way plaques located at those four stop signs with all way plaques and to install red reflective strips on all four of those stop signs as well. And the last recommendation is to remove and replace the existing 35 mile per hour speed limit sign located on the north side of Merced Avenue uh, and replace it with a school zone speed limit sign as well. Are we um, replacing the crosswalk at, at Michelle? Are we re repainting that or did it look okay? Mm -hmm. I see pictures. It's currently it? not in the recommendations. Okay. However, so. we can make that change if you would like. Right. There. It's just that the um, ladder part, it looks like it's um, the cross, cross bars are too thin. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. So maybe let's make the recommendation to this one. Okay. I'm talking about number one. Yes. On Michelle. Oh, on Michelle. Yeah, on Michelle at Michelle the and Merced. It's yellow right now, but usually the ladder is thicker, so it makes it more uh, visible. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, it has just the thin lines. Yeah. Let me get to refresh it. Yeah. So by the time it gets done, if let's just if refresh we're doing it the rest, too. Yeah. <laughs> if we're doing the rest, it's cheap too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cost effective just to refresh. It. So add that. So ladder <coughs> crosswalk high vis, yellow. Sure. Everything else looks. And then. Um, for Hollenbeck at Merced, do we have the, uh, 
stop ahead? Because it, it's always stop. Yes, off the top of my head, I believe we have stop aheads okay. for the southbound. I believe all directions, but except for westbound, off the top of okay, my okay. head from my recollection. Street. Okay. Do you remember? Yeah, there, there's definitely. I know there's southbound and northbound. Yeah, there is one for uh, eastbound, but it looked in pretty good condition from the pictures from your site video, but I didn't see the westbound one. I don't think there is because that's a residential area. Yeah, no, I think that's okay. We just want on the main streets, Merced and Hollaback. We want to make sure they're. Yeah, so PD does enforcement here a lot, and it's never, speed is typically never really a problem for us. It's more so the parents dropping their kids off in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the increased signage that says school area will help, but I think that's our primary concern. So like going southbound on Hollenbeck, we have parents dropping them off in the number one lane to cross a lane of traffic to get onto a sidewalk. And then even for eastbound Merced, they'll stop in the middle of the street, obstruct traffic and make them go, go across the street. So we typically, that's our biggest problem that for us that we enforce. So I don't know if there's anything that we can do to address well, that. Well, I'm hoping if we um, put in the RRFB at this crosswalk, that maybe parents <clears throat> will drop their kids off here and let them use the crosswalk. Yeah, I think that I think <laughs> I think that's probably going to be the most important thing is like making that uh, the, like retro reflective and yes, all that stuff. Yes, it'll be stuff. the flashing, you know, RFB. Mm -hmm. So that hopefully, um, yeah, parents will get the picture as well. Isn't this the one that they're doing construction right now? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, they're building a something yeah, a big it's building right basically right, right there right. yeah okay so maybe and i know they have a fence up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so that limits the parking for them to right. on the side of the road okay so <clears throat> do we move to um take all these items to council put on our list and then add the uh crosswalk out yeah Michelle. ladder crosswalk to refresh when we're doing it to um michelle at merced all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> so then we'll go on to our third item, which uh, this one was actually done by the city of Covina. Uh, only, a, uh, only the signage will actually be within our jurisdiction. All the rest of this will actually be within the city of Covina, uh, their jurisdiction. Oh, there we go. Uh, so for this one, it's at Workman Avenue and 2nd Avenue. Uh, the city of Covina looked at it for a multi-way stop sign warrant analysis for the intersection of Workman Avenue and 2nd Street. Workman Avenue is 56 feet wide roadway and is classified as a major collector per the Federal Highway Administration California Road System Map. It has two lanes of travel in each direction with a double yellow center line for uh, separation. And the posted speed limit along this segment is 35 miles per hour, and Bronca Elementary School is located at the intersection of Workman Avenue and Bronca Avenue, approximately 1,200 feet away from the subject intersection. And as well, there's the Eastland, Center, uh, Eastland Shopping Center just to the south of this intersection. Uh, Second Avenue is a north-south 36-foot wide road, uh, roadway classified as a local residential street. It has a prima facie speed limit of 25 miles per hour and speed humps were recently installed on this street within the city of Covina. Uh, the intersection that was studied is a three-way intersection uh, with 2nd Street being stop controlled and Workman Avenue being a th currently a through street with an existing painted crosswalk on the east leg of the intersection. And the city of Covina reviewed this against the CAMUTCD uh, section 2B.07 on all-way stop applications. And uh, as part of the investigation, uh, two of the warrants that they reviewed was uh, the five or more reported crashes in a 12-month period that are susceptible to correction by multi-way stop installation and minimum volumes. Uh, City of Covina did a review of the collision history uh, from Covina PD for a five-year period between February 1st of 2024, or through February 21st, 2024, and revealed that there were seven collisions at the intersection, and there was five collisions reported in 2019 that were uh, cited are that they're susceptible to correction by multi-way stop installation. Uh, 
City of Covina did not obtain 24 hour volume and turning movement counts for vehicles, pedestrians, and bicycles for the subject intersection uh, as criteria for section B1 and B2 of section 2B.07 would not have been met. Uh, criteria A of section 2B.07 was met with five crashes occurring in 2019. Uh, the prevailing speed along this segment uh, was done from the most recent speed survey done in 2021. Uh, the, during that speed survey, it was found that 85th percentile speed along uh, Workman Avenue was 38 miles per hour with an eight average daily traffic of 9,309 vehicles. And from that speed survey, it was recommended that the um, speed limit remain at 35 miles per hour. And for 2nd Street, it was, since it was a local street, it will remain a prima facie speed limit of 25 miles per hour. And based on their analysis, the city of Covina recommends that multi-way stop controls are to be installed at the intersection of Workman Avenue and 2nd Avenue for the east and west approaches of the, uh, based on the five-year crash history uh, since that warrant was met. And it's not shown on here, but should be noted that as part of this, the city of Covina is additionally recommending uh, installation of an ADA ramp, which will be within our jurisdiction behind the curb, and a stop sign, which will be installed within our jurisdiction. And that's for eastbound direction, I believe? Correct. So I think Covina has, is um, going with a always stop, and then they're also having a bulb out on the north side at the northeast corner for pedestrians to have a um, shorten the crossing dis distance um, for pedestrians. And then what's in the city of West Covina is a stop sign and the ADA ramp. And city of Covina is going to pay for all the improvements so there's no um, cost for the city of West Covina. So this basically is a um, receive and file unless we have comments on their report. And I think it already, for Covina, they told us that it already had been approved by their council and traffic commission. So we're taking it to see if there was any comments about, basically it's the stop sign and the ADA ramp, so. <coughs> So, um, there, is there any comments on the panel? No, the panel discussion? The, the Anything in the, in the curve come back to us as a encroachment permit at some point? Yes. Um, okay, so that one we will um, file that it has gone through traffic commission. And so I have one card, but I think it's on a different, on, on the overall comment. Yeah, not that, specific. It's not item on agenda. Okay, it's not on the agenda. So, um, you have the floor, Mr. Sobolvar. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Sobolvar. <laughs> uh, I gotta ask uh, with regards to intent. The information that's on the screen, which I imagine maybe you guys get to print out, is that intended just for the committee, or is that intended to be viewable by the public? When it goes on to the filming thing, it it's viewable by the public. We don't hand out the um, reports because it could always change. So, um, and then it could also change when it goes to council. So after it goes to council, it's considered final if it's approved, and then that's when it would be public document. Because at this stage, we're just a advisory, so we push it to council and they have the ultimate decision. So was that information available to the public for us to come speak on an item prior to you guys sending it to council? Or those reports are just for the committee? Um, and we come and speak on our own perspective. I think if we want to do a records request, request it. And what Jenna says is that we, we usually put it on a visual, um, I think it's in YouTube, right? And so for everybody to Yeah, so look it's at. up there. So but I think yeah. if you need I mean, the original comments is really hard to I know, read. it is. But that's, if you, that's, I, I don't think it would be. Yeah. But if it's not intended for the public to be reading, if it's intended just for you guys. Well, I think he, the film people zoom in. So if oh. you go to YouTube, it's zoomed in so they can see it better. Okay. At this, this meeting, we had to change it up <laughs> because sure. there was another meeting. So. Um, we try to make it a little bigger so everyone can read yeah, it. I can't see if you don't read it. I think you can 
correct me if wrong, he can make a records request. And but the information would be available prior to the meeting so that I can speak on something. Oh, I see what you're saying. So if it's an uh, item that, if you requested the item, we do provide a synopsis of what was looked at as well as the recommendations. Okay. So we do provide that. Um, to the requester. Yes. Typically to the requester, if someone reaches out to us and asks, like once the meeting's post, the agenda's posted, if there's something that you had a question on, you could always reach out to our email traffic at transsec.org and we could provide that information I know. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's small. Okay. Yeah. Right, thank you. So, yeah, just email us and we can let you know what the, um, like Brian said, what was the outcome of our analysis. It's just, it could change. Yeah. So. And yes, we apologize for the small screen writing. <laughs> I'm going, yeah, I sit here and I got to still use my glasses. So I, I understand. And, I guess and then Covina, where's no vote? Okay. No. Perfect. So then we will, uh, we went over audience comments on items oh. not on the agenda. And uh, make the announcement. Yes. And are there any uh, comments from any committee members on items on the agenda? It's not long. No. So we'll go ahead and adjourn. There is one, in, or I guess I have an announcement. Uh, next month's meeting uh, is going to actually get moved for traffic committee. It's going to be on Thursday, July 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, tentatively, it's going to be here in the community room. Um, and that will be uh, rescheduled from our typical meeting day, which would, I believe, be the 9th on that Tuesday. So it'll get moved to Thursday and said from 6 to 8 p.m. Again, tentatively here in the community room. And it's concerning the Citrus at Cameron report. It'll be about that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be. We're bringing the Citrus and Cameron location, just the signal. So anyone's interested in that. And we will be sending out um, notices to residents as well as anyone who had emailed us about that along the way since we've had this we will be sending out um, notices we just had to secure a time and a date so it'll be in this room but on thursday night 6 to 8 p.m so in the evening so maybe more residents can come what the 11th. thursday july 11th so a week after the fourth jenna is that meeting solely going to be devoted um, yes. For that subject. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's only going to have the Citrus and Cameron because we expect that residents will be interested in that. So we don't want to have smaller items that we want to take the attention away from. So it'll just be that item on it. It'll take a little Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, so. How much time do you have a lot? Six to nine? Six to eight, tentatively. So, yep, so we'll be sending out uh, notices and by mail and email. And then if anyone has, can't make the meeting and wants to send us your comments, which we've been hearing, but we're, you know, you can email us and we will Is keep a track of that. that. has been done prior to this meeting that's viewable? Uh, not yet. Or is it just a community meeting type of format? It's a community meeting format, but we're presenting um, more technical analysis just of that signal, of the intersection. Signal, no signal, whatever. Just the existing and uh, what we've done since. Okay. There's no other comments. We will go ahead and adjourn this meeting. And again, our next uh, next month's meeting for July will be moved to Thursday, July 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. here in the community room at City Hall. Thank you.